Thank you all for coming. I want to uh, acknowledge Chief Surpass and uh, James Carter, the Criminal Justice Commissioner. Of course, the city council members uh, are with us, and I thank them for being here. Uh, last night, between 8 p.m. and 5 a.m., there were five separate shootings uh, on the streets of New Orleans. Sixteen people were shot. Uh, Fourteen people were injured. Uh, two people were killed. Uh, in a number of the incidences, there was actually police presence on the scene before they occurred. Uh, I want to say one more time, this is a clarion call, uh, not just for New Orleans, but for the entire nation. Uh, young African-American males being killed at the ha hands of young African-American males is a national tragedy. Uh, it's unnatural, uh, and it has to stop. It's occurring all over the country. Last week, I was in Philadelphia with Mayor Nutter uh, on a national symposium dealing with the issue. Statistics will reflect that in cities like Philadelphia, Newark, Detroit, Baltimore, to name a few, there are 72 others. Uh, almost 40 percent of the murders in this country are occurring uh, in this same fashion, uh, and they all involve weapons. There are two sides of this battle. Uh, to the criminals, um, we're going to catch you. We're going to arrest you. Uh, we're going to bring you to justice. Uh, there is not a single tactic to reduce murder that we in New Orleans uh, are not uh, employing, from Project Safe Neighborhood to Comstat to community policing uh, to aggressive partnerships with the federal government on drug trafficking cases. Just to name a few, there is not one single tactic to reduce murder uh, that we are not employing aggressively. On the other side, we are working very hard uh, to save our sons. We had a uh, statewide and a citywide initiative uh, some weeks ago. We were recruiting an army of volunteers to mentor our young people. We are working on um, uh, Project Ceasefire, which is a, a model that we know works around the country. Uh, we are borrowing from the Milwaukee Homicide Review Commission uh, to implement a comprehensive re approach. But make no mistake about it, this continues to be a battle for the future of our city, and together, uh, we are going to win. Uh, we are united. We're going to use every weapon in our arsenal to attack this issue, uh, and we are, as we speak, redoubling our efforts. Uh, at this time, I want to turn it over to Chief Surpass to give some comments, uh, and then the Criminal Justice Commissioner Carter, uh, and then we'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As many of you know, last night at around 12.30 a.m., a shooting occurred at the corner of Bourbon and St. Louis. I want you to know that police officers were within feet of this event when it happened. Our deployment strategies for the Halloween night have been refined and continue to be refined from years in past. There were over 100 police officers dedicated specifically to the French Quarter, Bourbon Street, and Canal Street. In that case, we're continuing to call upon the community to assist us. Please call Crime Stoppers 822-1111 if you have any information. And just as we've seen recently in the Porter case and in many other cases, people are calling us continue to use that opportunity to share information with us. About two hours later at Canal and University, two men get into a scuffle. Uncharacteristically, no. They get into a scuffle, and at the end of that scuffle, as the perpetrator is walking away, the victim punched the perpetrator again to re-engage in the fight. The perpetrator spins with a gun and shoots and kills the young man. That case, police officers, again, were within a block of the case, chase down the perpetrator, make an arrest on the scene, recover the gun, and get any substantial statements to uh, prove this case in court, we hope. Later on, on Spain Street, two young men get out of a car and immediately were attacked by people in another vehicle. They both will survive. And then there was a shooting on Louisa Street last night in the 1800 block, uh, 1200 block of Louisa. That case, we suspect there will be an arrest before the day is over. Clearly, the message we want to continue to put to our people is this. Our police department is not sitting on its hands. We are adopting every policy, practice, strategy, tactic in this nation to fight crime and violent crime. I will remind you that in March of this year, independent assessment by the Bureau of Justice Assistance said that our police department's response to crime was an impressive plan and should be followed and carried out. We are doing that every single day. The real question here is, are we going to continue, and I think we will, see the community say, we've had enough. 
we will share information with the police. We will share information with the prosecutors. That will be the key to bringing these two cases to conclusion today. Thank you. Thank you. In keeping with the mayor's uh, vision in terms of the public health approach to dealing with what we are dealing with here relative to young men, particularly African-American men, the mayor's six-pronged approach, which is prevention, intervention, interdiction, arrest, prosecution, and rehabilitation, we are working with every aspect of the community. We are working with citizens. We are working with the business community. We are working with the school system to make sure we address this in a public health holistic way. We have launched activities with the Neighborhood Watch to, to engage our citizens. We are in the process of standing up a mentorship orientation um, next Thursday, I think that is, at 6 p.m. at Gallia Hall to address issues wrapping around particularly African-American males. In addition to that, we are engaged in an aggressive uh, reentry program to deal with issues of ex-offenders in the city. But more importantly, as relative to the, specific, the specificity of what we're doing, the mayor mentioned the ceasefire initiative and working with the chief and working with the mayor in terms of his vision to address this issue. We found in the city of New Orleans there are more incidences of violence and homicide related to simple conflict resolution issues. To address that in a very, very bold and progressive evidence-based way, we'll be launching the ceasefire initiative that seeks to address that. So we are making sure that we address this from a holistic perspective, from a best practices perspective, from an evidence-based perspective, to make sure that not only we deal with tactical issues, but we also deal with strategic preventative issues to address this issue in a very, very holistic way. Thank you. Questions? Well, I think, I think there's no question that we have a serious number of events that have occurred in the French Quarter in the last year that have gone flawlessly. This is a rarity. This is an anomaly. These are the kinds of things that our deployment package is intended to thwart. But again, last night, we had police officers within feet of both events, and yet these particular young men with a lifestyle of violence chose to create the ultimate acts of violence. We will always look at our deployment strategy. We'll always go back and make sure it's a good plan. But there were over 100 officers last night dedicated solely to Bourbon Canal because of the crowds we expect during the Halloween night. Coach, Katie. Um, one, I guess one, when was the last time we had a major gun seizure? And are we going after the gun? Because obviously this guy, apparently the, the victim in this case, just got out of jail within the last two weeks and clearly had a gun if, he, if they were, in fact, shooting at each other. Recall we said that we have adopted every single strategy tactic plan in this nation that has something to do with violent crime or murder. Our Project Safe Neighborhood, which we stood up in July 2010 with a detective in each district and SOD, there are over 540 individuals that we've arrested for possession of a firearm who were either a convicted felon or a serious felon. And those cases are reviewed every Thursday since July of 2010 with the United States Attorney, the District Attorney, the ATF, and the NOPD to determine what is the appropriate sanction. Our task force officers by themselves have taken off nearly 900 guns off the streets in the last year. The question is also this, how do these illegal guns continue to be in the hands of illegal usage? This is not an issue of the right to bear arms. These are illegally obtained firearms <coughs> through straw purchases, through burglaries. Need I remind you, we released not long ago that in the city of New Orleans, unfortunately, we had over 120 guns stolen from cars, and 60 of them, the cars weren't even locked. We need help. We need people to protect their firearms, and we need to continue to enforce the firearm purchasing laws in this land to ensure that the wrong people are not buying them and or getting them off the stolen market. So when we have, okay, go ahead. Another, another good question. We adopted a knock-and-talk strategy. Again, another tactic used by police departments in this nation. What knock-and-talk is is our Special Operations Division SWAT people. They go to the homes of those who are convicted felons, uh, convicted firearm residents in Orleans Parish, and we literally knock on the door and talk to them. We've made 39 arrests just this year from doing that, meaning that someone who was under the control of the court and probation and parole is with us when we do this visit. We're very grateful for their assistance. 38 or 39 people have been rearrested because they have violated the conditions of their release from jail as it related to a firearm. So again, there is not a single tactic, strategy, or policy in this nation to deal with murder and violence that we have not adopted. And as the mayor just talked about, we're expanding them. We're trying to find new and innovative ways 
to turn this corner. Well, two things. First of all, we are building, we're in the process of designing and building a comprehensive juvenile justice system as we speak in the Youth Study Center. Uh, we've just recently uh, finished our negotiations with FEMA, uh, and that is in process. So she's absolutely correct about that. Again, it's important to get on the back end and the front end of this. Uh, in terms of the young people being on the street, I'm going to let the, the chief answer that question. We do have a curfew. The curfew is being enforced, but I'll let him address the question specifically, and James, you as well. This police, uh, this police department fully embraces the enforcement of curfew. We have more curfew arrests this year than last year, and the reason we enforce curfew is because it makes children safe. So every night we have officers that are looking for curfew violators in the city of New Orleans to bring them home or to the curfew center. There's no question that it makes a difference for us, and we continue to enforce that every day. Mary, did you, um, did you want James to respond to you? James? Okay. Um, thank you very much. The, the issue of having activities for these kids to do, uh, to get on the front end, the prevention side, is something we're working wholeheartedly to do. The mentorship initiative, partnerships that we've confected with the, um, the Hornets and with the Saints, um, um, the increased funding that we've had over the, the sustained increased funding we've had to NORD and, and the expansion of uh, that particular activity. We are leaving no stone unturned relative to making sure that we have this holistic approach to deal with not only back end issues but also preventive, interventive, as well as interdictive programs. Are you finding that parents or people in the community are getting it uh, when you talk to them about how severe this problem is and the role they play? Yes, I, I, I see in, in my experience, my personal experience, uh, parents starting to understand in, in that sense based on the question that you just uh, indicated there, but that there are, there's, a, there's a realization that's going forward that we all have responsibility that we must take in this particular process and that dealing with the problem from a holistic public health perspective is the way to go. Well, I would say two things. First of all, what happened on the corner of Bourbon and St. Louis is not anything that doesn't occur on, in the neighborhoods of New Orleans every day. So this is not just an image problem. Uh, I think what happened last night, unfortunately, uh, happens too often. It really was not tourism-centered, notwithstanding the fact that it happened where there were a number of tourists. Uh, as the chief said, we have had um, many, many, many events that have occurred here that involve huge numbers of tourists without incident. This is a much bigger problem than that. This is a bigger problem than whether or not the city of New Orleans is going to suffer economic consequence. As I have said to you many, many times, 15,000 people were killed on the streets of America last year, most of which were done between young African American men against young African American men with guns as a result of a petty uh, argument that they're having. This is a very deep problem. It is unnatural and it is unacceptable. If you look at the statistics, it's happening all over the country. Murders are spiking, spiking in many major cities, and this is a deep and abiding problem that has to start in the home, it has to start in the neighborhood, and it's not going to, the, the, the solution is not going to be found unless everybody is involved. Y'all have all asked us a number of questions uh, on a number of different levels. Are you being more aggressive about the guns? Absolutely. You saw last week with the arrest of Mr. Porter that the ATF, DEA, the FBI, the U.S. Attorney, the District Attorney, the Police Department did what they do well, and he turned himself in earlier as a consequence of getting a lot of information from the public. That's when the, the responsive system is working well. You asked a question about the kids. Are the parents getting it? Not as well as they need to. We have stood up NARD. We've doubled the funding. The men and women behind me doubled the funding for NARD. We tripled the number of people that actually used NARD this summer. We tripled the number of jobs that we had for kids, and that was all a positive thing, but it is not enough. We have to do more. This is not something that you can lay down on, and it is clear to all of us that, in my opinion, it's, re it's reached epidemic proportions, and we will continue to work very, very hard, as the chief said, to employ every tactic that we know of and even find new ones that are responsive to this issue. It's not just specific to New Orleans. Uh, and so, yes, while I'm concerned, about the image that it portrays, I'm much more deeply concerned 
about the kids and what this says about uh, you know the culture of violence that we have in the city of New Orleans. And to me, uh, at the end of the day, that is more important. We have uh, two last ones, Danny, and then me. Last one for the chief. Um, with the shootings overnight, um, we talked about where there are known relationships between the people, between all of them involved. I mean, we were hearing that on the road. Two people who started shooting in the crowd. They didn't know each other, same thing for the Elm Street and then the other um, building as well. What typifies murder in New Orleans is that people knew each other when they committed this act, and predicting that is their prediction, not the government's prediction. In this particular event, we continue to work through those issues. We're not exactly sure yet at Bourbon and St. Louis, and we don't think at Canal and University was anything more than potentially coming across one another. We will continue to investigate that. That is the question, though. Young people choosing an act of violence by their decision-making process and how to interrupt that. Okay. And so a couple of little quick questions. For one, I'm hearing what you feel like what you're doing right now is all you can do. Is that what I'm hearing? No, I'm not saying that, no. So what, what's next from here on? Well, I think it's important that, you know, we're 18 months into a revolution of what was described aptly as the worst police department in American history. We work every day at advancing this police department. We have adopted every single tactic, strategy, and policy we can find that other departments have used on the question of violence and murder. We are going to continue to look for more reasons. Our people are smart. We got smart cops out there, and we're going to try to find even more innovative ways. You got to know this: since January of this year, our community policing piece has touched 41,000 New Orleanians. And during those conversations, we talk about safety, we talk about crime, we talk about advancing the police department. We're going to fight this battle every day, and we're going to win. You know, tactic, tactically, I think you said that you're doing all you can do. There's nothing else you can throw at it. But I mean, you need community support. So Quite is that where you are now? I mean, that's the next really piece. Uh, uh, say, yeah. okay, we got it. Let me answer that question mm -hmm. for you. What, the answer, that? first of all, again, if you can think about this as a number of different component parts. So the police department is doing everything it can to reorganize itself and focus its attention. The police department, in partnership with the FBI, the DEA, and the ATF, now they're beginning to coordinate. We now need to look at other part of the system. So you asked about <laughs> probation. That, excuse me, that needs to get better as well. The prosecutions need to get better. The convictions need to get better. The community needs, again, to organize itself and to give us information. That's what the Save Our Sense initiative was, was designed to do. And we have to keep getting better at that. If that gets as good as it possibly can get, it can't ever be good enough to stop this if there's not a change in culture, right, that has to come from the ground up. It can start with families. It can start with parents. It can start with mentors. It can move itself up through the school system. But what we have here is we have a culture of violence. If you just think about the incident that happened on Canal Street, two individuals got in a fist fight. Somebody pulled out a gun and shot somebody else 32 times as a consequence of the fist fight. Now that's very different than the way those kinds of altercations used to end back in the day. It used to just end with a fist fight. It's not ending that way anymore. Plus somebody had an illegal gun that had the capacity to hold 32 shots. Now that's dramatically different and we've got to drill down on it. We've got to look at it. We have to understand it. We obviously don't know what the answer to it is because if we did, we'd be solving this place all over America. But you find New Orleans, once again, being the canary in the coal mine for the rest of the nation. There are other mayors around the country that understand this. Mike Bloomberg understands this in New York. That's why he has a coalition against illegal guns that I'm a part of. Mike Nutter understands it in Philadelphia, which is why he had a seminar on it the other day. The Conference of Mayors is really trying to raise this issue up to a national level so we, begin, we can begin to address it both on the federal, state, and local level, and then from the community up. When we finally get all of that together and the culture changes, we will see violence go down in America. Right. Thank you all, Thank you all so much.